should I play it here? Or maybe here? Or maybe here? Greetings from the Jazz Cloud. I'm Richie Zellan, and in this video, I bring you the final episode in a series of 10 tips to improve your jazz guitar solos. In this lesson, which I've entitled The Ear to Finger Connection, I want to discuss the ultimate challenge for most improvisers, which is the importance of transferring what you hear in your head to the appropriate location on the fretboard. Coming up next. Welcome back to the Jazz Guitar Channel. In the previous nine videos in this series, I've shared with you what I believe are some of the most important concepts that must come together in order to create a good jazz solo. Some of these concepts are new to some of you, while on the other hand are sometimes taken for granted and completely ignored by others. So, by all means, be sure to watch the rest of the lessons in this series because I'm sure there is something, if not a lot, that you will learn. Believe me, it's all in the details and just suddenly becoming aware of a small detail you weren't familiar with regarding any of these concepts can eventually make a big difference in the way you'll solo. So I'm placing a link to all the previous lessons in this series down below. In this final lesson, I want to address and give you a few tips on two topics that I've saved for last. Not because they are less important, but on the contrary, they constitute the foundation for the successful application of all the previously mentioned tips in this series. And yes, this takes work and time, lots of time. That is, it's a gradual process sometimes over many years because studying jazz improvisation is not a sprint. It's a marathon. In my numerous years of teaching jazz improv to guitarists, I have found that there are several levels of improvisers in the ear to finger spectrum. There are those that hear a melody in their head because they have a good ear to begin with, but a weak understanding of where the notes to what they hear are situated throughout the fretboard. They might be able to play in one spot on the fretboard but freeze altogether in a different region. These players occasionally play some nice things due to their good ears, but mainly lack fingering resources, and in most cases could use a better knowledge of theory to fully develop their ideas. Next, there are those that know the fretboard and their jazz theory, but don't necessarily pre-hear what they are going to play. They are conditioned to play certain combination of notes in most places because of their understanding of theory and the fingerings necessary to execute their lines purely based on theory. They are not in control of everything they play, and you probably wouldn't even know it from just hearing them improvise over one or two standards. These cats are lacking in ear training. And finally, you have the players who are at the ideal level in the ear to finger spectrum of this connection. They have the proper ear training, so whatever they hear, they can break down and immediately identify in terms of their intervallic components. That is, they know, for example, that they are hearing, say, a chromatic approach to a major third, followed by a perfect fifth, and so on. So, the identity of relative pitch combinations are now a part of their hearing, which regardless of what instrument they play, makes them true musicians. When coupled with an understanding of how these pitches are organized into scale fingerings in every region and register of the fretboard, these players are in control of whatever they play. So this is the goal you should be striving for. Every musician should strive to be a control freak, <laughs> at least 
of what comes out of their instrument. <laughs> So it goes without saying that to really improvise some good solos, we need to master the ear to finger connection. Two general areas here. First, there is no such thing as ear training without theory. So there, you should be killing two birds with one stone. This is a subject which is very broad and I can't get into detail here, but any good ear training course should gradually teach you to first identify intervals and then teach you to do so with chords and eventually with chord progressions. This is the first thing they teach you at any good musical school, whether it's classical or jazz oriented. So if this is something you lack, do yourself a favor and consider taking a course in ear training. And while I'm on this subject, I want to recommend a video I did previously that I've entitled The Jazz Guitarist Who Couldn't Play Happy Birthday. Check it out. For guitarists, the second area in the ear to finger connection is a good command of fingerings for any scale throughout the entire fretboard. And you may have a great ear, but if you are technically limited to only a few fingerings for each scale, when it comes to improvising over your typical jazz changes, you will only be able to play a fragment of your actual ideas. So, having said all of this, let me demonstrate the ear to finger connection. So first I hear the phrase in my head, Ba -da -ba -da -da -da. And after identifying its intervallic makeup, I can play it anywhere on the fretboard. Or. 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 The seven fingerings I have just used are part of the heptatonic system of fingerings, which is what some call caged on steroids. This I have found is the most complete fingering system when it comes to seven note scales on the guitar. Anything out there, including those three note per string scales some use, are simply composite fingerings of those included in this heptatonic system. Let me show you next how useful it is in playing over changes. Previously, I played seven fingerings horizontally throughout the fretboard staying in one key. Now I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to play vertically using seven different fingerings that are going to cover every one of the 12 keys, but this time progressing through the cycle of fifths. C. F. B e flat. E flat. A flat. D flat. G flat. back to C. And throughout the whole process, all 12 keys, I haven't moved my, my hand more than one fret back. And that holds true in any region of the guitar with the heptatonic system when playing vertically through all 12 keys. So here is my bottom piece of advice in this the final lesson of this series. If you are serious about playing jazz guitar, please lay down the proper foundation to do so. You can learn licks on the side if that makes you happy, but by no means at the expense of not laying down a solid foundation. 
And I truly hope that you understand that ear training and theory coupled with an understanding of all the fingering resources related to your instrument are the very essence of that foundation. But please don't drive yourself crazy in trying to reinvent the wheel while trying to figure out the method to this madness we call jazz improvisation. I currently have two one-year online courses and six books that teach you step-by-step -step how to develop a strong foundation to take your improvisation skills to the next level. It's called the Bebop Guitar Improv Series, and I will put a link in the info section down below for those interested in getting more info. Throughout the years, I have worked and helped literally thousands of students become better jazz guitarists, not only online, but as a professor at many music universities internationally. And so I'm confident I can do the same for you. I hope this series has been beneficial. As usual, I'd love to hear your comments and welcome your questions. And if this is your first time here and you enjoyed this lesson, please subscribe and be sure to click the notification bell icon so you won't miss anything. And here is a video I believe you should watch next. Have fun and see you in the next lesson.